Hey, it's Krez, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how much a leaky bath faucet might be costing you. So maybe you've seen some like article headlines or, you know, blog posts that are something about like faucet costs hundreds of dollars, fix your leaks or I don't know, some weird stuff like that. I have this uh, really leaky tub faucet and you can see it's leaking quite a bit. So hopefully your leak isn't as leaky as mine. Before I repair this, I wanted to do a little math and actually figure out how how much is this? Like, what is the cost of not repairing this? And how much does it actually add up to over time? So in order to answer this question, we have to math. Uh, but we really need to know two things before we start. One is going to be the rate of the leak, right? So how much water is actually leaking from this leak? And it will be helpful if that's, you know, something like a measurement of gallons per minute, gallons per hour, something that we can convert like that. Two, you're going to need to know the cost of your water. I'm gonna use my utility bill to find that. So once we have those two things, we can do a little bit of math. What we're gonna to have to do to figure out the first one to measure the rate is we actually have to take a measurement. So, and I'm gonna use mine as an example, but keep in mind, like your leak might not leak at the same rate mine does. So the easiest way I thought about to do this is to just take a gallon bucket, set it underneath the faucet and see how long it takes for that gallon bucket to fill up. That is going to, and we time it, right? So then I'll know how long does it take for this leak to leak one gallon. So you'll see, I start a timer here and then we're gonna speed up the footage because we don't need to watch this for that long, right? Um, but this leak produces one gallon of water in about 40 minutes, right? Pretty close to it. So we'll use 40 minutes, one gallon in 40 minutes. You know, if we wanna get rid of minutes and convert this to, you know, gallons per hour, we know that one hour is equal to 60 minutes. Um, so we take 60 over 40 minutes and when we do that minutes are going to cancel and we'll have gallons per hour the same as six over four reduce it some more is three over two and then you know that equals 1.5 gallons per hour that's the late rate of our leak which is actually quite a bit right what's more likely is that you just have a slow and steady drip now this leak started out that way and now it's uh it's well it's heavy on the steady old faithful always always leaking per hour is helpful but there's a couple things we can do here we can multiply by 24 because there are 24 hours in a day which would be you know another helpful thing to know because that could that could be an interesting metric multiply 1.5 times 24 is uh 36 so we have 36 gallons a day. Is that right? That's a lot. That's a lot of milk jugs, right? Good thing it's not leaking milk, poor cows. So if you wanna find out right per month and per year, uh, cause on a monthly basis and an annual basis, this will kind of be interesting to look at. So if we multiply by 30, assuming you know there's 30 days in a month, we end up with 1,080. And I'm off the page, let's go over here. Okay, so 1,000. 80 and that's gallons per month that's a lot of water 36 which is our the rate of our leakage times 365 which is going to get us 13,140 gallons per year that's a lot that is a lot. So now we know how much this, you know, how many gallons it's costing us per month and per year. Now we need to f put that into financial terms. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first one that's gonna be super easy uh, is hopefully your water company, your utility company just tells you how much it costs, water costs per gallon. Uh, now our city doesn't do that. The previous city we lived in, that municipality did. They said that the cost of water was like one cent per gallon. So that's how expensive water was. You could have a utility bill. We're gonna take a look at this to really figure that out um, because there's a couple different ways water is billed. Uh, the, uh, typically, if you have city water, you also have city sewer. And the city is going to, they're going to charge you for every gallon in and every gallon going out. Now we know that's not exactly how gallons get utilized, right? Because if a, a gallon of water comes onto your property and you use it to water your lawn or your garden, it's not exiting through the city sewer right? But your sewer charges assume that it is. Um, and you know, they account for that. But given that reality, you kind of pay for water twice. 
Uh, now, obviously, if you have a, a well or your own septic tank, uh, these costs are going to be a little more difficult to find out because you have the installation costs, right? When you had your well, dr well drilled, it was maybe, you know, 10,000, 15,000, whatever. And then your septic installed, maybe that was 10 to 25, 30 grand, depending on the type of system, size of system, uh, the type of soils it was placed into, right? Um, so you might have all of those costs and you could figure out how to distribute those over the life of the system and then figure out how, approximately how many gallons you use per year and all of that. But uh, typically if you have a well, you don't have a meter in your house. So you don't really know how many gallons you're using. So this situation, you're re we're really only figuring this out for like, hey, if you're connected to you know city water and sewer. So we have our leaks and we're gonna take these numbers and add them together to figure out how much water costs us. You know, we add up all of the water related fees, which they have what they call a residential water base charge, then the residential water, which I'm gonna assume that is usage. And then they also have a state testing fee and a water meter surcharge. So that's what they charge us for, you know, having the meter. So when we add all of those numbers up, we get uh, seventy-two dollars and ninety-six cents. Now this bill is a is a quarterly bill, so we get billed every quarter here for municipal water and sewer and usage. They don't give us units, which is somewhat frustra frustrating, right? But we're going to assume that since when we go and look on our meter, it measures in gallons. We're going to assume that they're billing us in gallons. Um, that seems reasonable. But you have to be careful because sometimes, you know, it can, your municipality might not bill the same way. They might bill in, you know, some other type of like water unit, which could be like per hundred gallons or per thousand gallons. So there's going to be some variability here. Um, so it'd be helpful if they give us units, but for the sake of this, we're going to assume that it is in gallons. So they're saying our usage is 8,000, which is also interestingly convenient, right? Like all of the numbers on all of my bills is never accurate to the, you know, hundreds, tens, or single gallons. It's always the, you know, on the thousand level is how they determine billing. So that can be a little bit like, well, how accurate is this? Uh, but hopefully we're, we're gonna get a pretty good idea by figuring this out. That is one number we can take. The other number we can consider when we consider the cost of water, because we're also paying for this too, right? Like, yes, you pay the actual cost of water, but then you also pay for it to be carried away. So then if I add in these, you know, there's three other water related charges here that have to do with exiting water, used water, you could say, which is going to be your sewer base, our sewer base fee, our residential sewer and our stormwater residential. So when I add those costs up, we get $70 and 63 cents. And you can see that's about equal to that. So if you know the difference between considering just the cost of water and then the cost of water and sewer as your cost of water is about double. So the usage on our bill is 8,000 gallons. So we're gonna divide this by 8,000 gallons, 0.00912, so like a 10th of a penny. So we could round up and say, yeah, you know, our previous municipality, that was pretty clear. If we round up, it's about one cent per gallon is the cost. Um, so we take our other numbers and if we add these two numbers together, we are going to get, uh, what is that, 143.54. And we divide that number by 8,000 gallons. So this is considering the cost of our water and sewer as the cost of our water. Then we end up at, uh, you know, round up, it's about 0 0.18 cents. So almost two cents per gallon. So that we know then is our price of water. So we figured out our leakage rate. We figured out how much water cost us. I'm gonna use both these scenarios then to calculate how much this water is actually costing us. So let's do it on um, an annual basis. Say you don't take care of this leak for a year. So we have our, you know, 13,140 gallons. So in both cases, we're gonna take our 140 gallons per year and multiply it by, you know, the numbers that we just found. So we're going to multiply this by 0.01 and we'll multiply this one by this number 0 0.018. 
first one, this leak is costing us $131.40 per year. That's a good chunk of change. That's a real good chunk of change. $236.52. So I guess when people say a leak could cost you hundreds of dollars a year, it's like, yeah, no, no kidding, right? Um, that that's that's clearly feasible. Like that's that's possible here given what we're seeing. A couple of other things that are worth pointing out. One, if your this this leak is going to be more expensive if it's a hot water leak. And the reason for that being is you also have the cost of the energy, right? However you heat your water, whether it's, you know, uh, electric resistance, high, hybrid heat pump, electric, propane, natural gas, or solar, you have a the cost of the energy that you added to that water to heat it. So that, that's another cost and those costs are gonna vary and it gets a little bit complex to, you know, calculate that. But we could simply say, you know, for the case of this video that a hot water leak is going to be more expensive than a cold water leak. The reason being the cold water, you only had to pay for the water and then it's exit through the sewer. But with hot water, you had to pay for the water itself, the energy to heat that water, bring it up to a you know reasonable temperature and store it in your hot water tank. And then the cost of the sewer. So you, hot water leaks for that reason are gonna be more expensive than cold water leaks. Obviously with a you know, faucet like the one I have in my bath, you can tell whether you have a hot water leak or a cold water leak given which one doesn't turn the water off. But and if you have a single knob, you might not be able to tell as easily. You're pretty much just gonna have to feel and see what's the water temp, right? After it's been leaking. Is it, is the, are the drops coming out hot or are they cold? So let's talk about the fix for this. The fix for this is pretty simple. We're gonna take this faucet apart and we are going to um, swap out some seals and hopefully that's all that's broken. But you know, we might buy a whole assembly kit and replace the knobs and stuff and some other components because the screw on this one is, is stripped out as well. $236.52 plus the energy that it takes to condition that water. So if I do nothing for a year, that's a good chunk of change that adds up. Another thing to consider, this is just, you know, extra financial advice, a dollar saved is more effective than a dollar earned. And the reason for that, right? If, if you've never heard that before, that sounds weird. Here's why that idea of like a, a penny saved is a penny earned. That's not true because a penny saved is after tax where a penny earned is before tax. So let's assume your tax rate in here in the US is just like 30, 30%. So if you're paying 30% in taxes, your a, a dollar saved is actually worth a dollar and thirty cents, um, because it's money that you already earned that you didn't have to go. It wasn't new money you had to go out and earn and pay taxes on. Money you've saved is after tax dollars, if that makes sense. So um, you know you could multiply this by uh, 1.3 and find out that saving is more effective in earning as far as your net income for for that reason. So. Just some extra stuff. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind when you fix this. If you have a, a faucet that's broken like this, you've probably gotten used to gripping that sucker real hard and turning it off. And that might be, in our case, why the screw stripped out because that was the only way we could kind of get it to stop leaking. You think about the length of your pipe. So your faucet turn off, shut off is up here. And there's a little run of pipe going down your wall and then it comes out your faucet. If you all of a sudden cut that water off right here, the water is going to want to drain down the faucet. So there's still water is the moment you cut it off, there's still water that exists from the length of pipe that goes from here, you know, to the spout where it's coming out in your tub. And as soon as you turn it off here, gravity is still going to take that water and it's going to drain out. So what you're used to doing is you're like, you'll turn it off, you'll hit the off position, and then it's still dripping. So then you'll crank it more. You have to stop doing that after you repair this, because what you're going to do is you're in the habit of that and you're going to wear out the seals that you replaced and other components prematurely. It should be a gentle turnoff and that's it. And then that seal is going to do the work. What you're actually seeing there, you know, you're going to think because your faucet's been leaky and you haven't been able to turn it off for months or years or however long you've been avoiding confronting this little problem in your house, you've gotten used to just cranking on it, right? You don't want to do that after you go and repair this and it still drips a little bit. Know that, right? You might think like, oh shoot, I didn't actually repair it. It still leaks. Um, or you, you know, and the members of your household might be used to just cranking that. S stop doing that. You got to get in the habit of not doing that. Um, otherwise, you're going to create, you know, a leak again fairly quickly. There you have it. Uh, a leaky faucet tub might be costing you $236.52 a year, which is, you know, 
no small amount, I suppose. So hopefully that gives you an idea of the math involved and you can take, figure out what your leakage rate is and you can figure out how much your water costs to figure out how much your leak is actually costing you now that you know some of the math involved and how we, you know, take those two, two numbers and walk through it to figure this out. Or you could just say, mm, you know what, it's worth fixing because I don't need to know exactly, but it's, you know, it's costing me some amount of money, so let's just address it. And with that, may your plumbing always be leak-free, free-flowing, and, well, not as leaky as a porcupine's waterbed, I suppose, because that's real leaky. You don't want to mess with that. Water everywhere. With that, may your plumbing always be leak-free and flea-flowing. Flea flowing. Let's flow some fleas. Free flowing.